it's me, Riot, and it's time to watch another part of Monster and the Ape. With Terrible Fest just over a month away, I figure we gotta keep getting weird. So this time I invited Bruce Lungo, the director of Blood Sick Psychosis, the SOV throwback shot on video for you noobs. Punk rock, horror, drugs, Satan. And a cameo by Dave the Rock Nelson. We're going to talk about the things that Bruce is doing next. And why and what Blood Sick Psychosis is. Which you'll be able to see at Terrible Fest 6. March 24th at 9pm for only 2 Canadian dollars. What? I just want everyone to get to see this weirdness. So come on out. For now though, we're going to watch episode 2. Uh edge of fear of monster and the ape but i will tell you that bruce and i completely ignore it we just talk about other things so you can see the ape and the monkey suit guy in the background or you can listen to us or you can do both crazy options what huh? the monster and the ape huh hello bruce welcome to a another weird video that we're doing uh i will be over the next month making several people watch episodes of the monster and the ape from 1945 uh i don't remember what happened on last week so it's okay when you walk in on this it'll be totally fine and it's a lot great 18 minutes so that gives me 18 minutes to ask you some questions about you and ignore the video completely <laughs> I'll do my best. You get to steal the show from both a robot and a guy in an ape costume. The monster is just a robot. It sounds like something Legosi would have done. Yeah, it's really shocking that he's not. It's around the same time as like Phantom Creeps and that kind of stuff. Um, right, right. The robot really makes me think of like the robot versus the Aztec mummy. It's real like sure. Mexican um, action fair of that time. Anyway, uh, we're here really to talk about you, though. We're here to talk about you. I, it was only just yesterday that I decided to actually look at your IMDb and realize you got a producer credit for my favorite film of all time. Of all time? <laughs> of all time, Blood Fart Lake. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Blood Fart Lake 2. 2 is my favorite out of the two as well. So Return um, to Blood Fart Lake. And it's funny you say that. I'm wearing my Warlock Home video shirt right now. I oh, I should have worn mine. Eh, I'm wearing <laughs> something that says super plastic. Um, you know, the funny thing is about that is I just realized that I was a producer on that movie about a year ago. <laughs> um, I And I still need to watch it. <laughs> I haven't even seen part two yet. I mean, um, it's, it's just like your film, Blood Six Psychosis, it's on Tubi. <laughs> Except it's. Yeah, no, um, is Chris Seaver is great. I love Chris. And um, I think um, with that movie, uh, he was doing some sort of like crowdfunding thing for something. I mean, it was like, I think like 10 years ago or something now. Yeah, and, it'd be uh, early in the Kickstarter game at that level when. Yeah, and I, I think he was trying to fund a different movie that ended up not happening, and he just like put whatever money he had towards uh, Blood Fart instead, or something like that. <laughs> because I don't remember anything about Blood Fart like two like at all. And then one day Joel Weinkoop is texting me, and he's like. Uh, hey man, and so I'm checking IMDb, and uh, you're the Blood Fart Lake Two guy, right? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, I have kind so, of yeah, that I, connection I, I with Chris as well, in a funny way. I have a, a connection like that with Chris Seaver as well, in a funny way, because uh, because of how much I love that movie. One day, yeah. just online, I asked him, saying, "I'm making a movie. Can I name drop it in the movie to make it sound like we exist in the same world?" And oh, cool. My movie Assault on the Snake Men. Someone has this like Vietnam flashback saying, Do you remember the war on Blood Fart Lake? Oh God. It was all the blood, <laughs> all the farts. It was terrible. No yeah. came out uh, the same man again. But um and then a different podcast saw my movie around the same time they saw Blood Fart Lake. And so they assumed mm -hmm. Chris and I were buddies. So they did an interview with me, but didn't really bring it up. And then they did an interview with Chris and said, oh, you know, your friend Adam, you make movies in the same universe together. And Chris was like, who? What the fuck are you talking about? And then he remembered. And he was like, oh, oh I, I don't know him. Like, we just know each other on the internet, which 
Uh, I'm actually surprised you guys haven't met. I mean, I feel like Rochester and uh, Toronto aren't too far apart. Well, to be totally honest, we actually have, like, bumped into each other at, like, Fan Expo in Toronto. He comes up here a couple of times. But we don't, like, hang out. Like, and Chris realized who he was talking about. Because he's like, oh, I I know the guy. But, you know, just like the rest of us, we, who are in that scene of those type of movies, we all know each other via this ridiculous thing called the internet like half of us don't sure, like, sure. know each other well um, right right how I have a connect- similar relationship to Chris ma- mainly through he w- used to come down to Monster Mania like a couple times a year mm-hmm. uh, which is uh, Jersey but right outside of Philly uh, and um, yeah I could yeah I mostly I'm know him as like a pen pal as well for the last 10 or 15 years or however long now but um, yeah, I probably hung out with Chris like maybe three times in my life, you know, but uh, yeah, mostly <laughs> internet as well, you know. Which I'm sure is a uh, three times to very much remember. He's not going to let you forget hanging out with him. <laughs> uh, but that's what this scene kind of has to do. Um, we have to like yeah. kind of find ways to connect to each other and cross over in our own weird ways. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Chris is, Chris was a really big help for, with, for me uh, with Blood Six Psychosis, actually. Uh, you know, with uh, when he started doing the Warlock Home Video stuff, um, the, like the throwback to shot on video, which is weird because he started off shooting on video, grew into the digital age, and then went back to video um, with Warlock. Uh, and he um, he gave me a lot of good advice on what kind of what kind of cameras hold up these days and how to digitize them and um, how to um, do a lot of that kind of stuff so i was like he's actually like um he was like a, a big a big influence on on my films actually not really in style i'm not you know i don't do like comedy stuff like him yeah. but like as far as like you know like the technical specifics of it he's like definitely like a huge help and inspiration for me well i mean i think a lot of us who are fans of that style of film like the sov in general um yeah. and those who are also like making that be it digital or you know actual um th- there's a certain geek level into us where we got to like make certain you know we always have to make our 80s references along with it and stuff like that but um for yours one i remember at least one letterbox review was saying well i'm tired of these fake sov films um as if because there's so many people using like after effects and things like that on them um did you get that a lot? Is I've only seen the one real review that said that, but have you? Um, you know, yeah, I think there were. You use? I know there was somebody on IMDb that said it as well. A couple people said it, um, but yeah, we. Um, I think I, I think there's one person that claimed we used like fake filters too, which is crazy because we didn't. But um, no, yeah, I mean, I just think uh, VHS looks cooler, and if you use filters, it doesn't look like VHS, so it's like, why go through the hassle of trying it? Just just shoot it on VHS. It's more fun, you know? Uh, but no, we shot it on VHS-C. Um, we used a few different camcorders. Um, I think, like, three of them broke while we were filming. <laughs> but, then I, but then I found one on the internet that was, like, brand new, uh, like in the package like you know 25 years old but like wow. open. and uh so we finished the movie on that camcorder it was i think it was a jvc jvc vhsc for, i want to say it was from like 97 or something like that and uh so that was at least then, a little bit of a smaller machine you could carry that around a little easier it wasn't like you're having a full honking over the show no i think i only had bought one of like the larger um uh, vhs cameras and it was not working for me at all so then we we used all small camcorders it was like uh i'm trying to think of it so they were all like about this size one of these little guys oh okay yeah Mm. um which they're horrible for sound but they look they look pretty good you know (laughs) well for vhs you know they look they look like vhs i have one gigantic one i can't even think what it is off the hand because for the last 10 years it hasn't been able to charge its battery so you have to yeah. plug it in if you're going to actually use it so i keep that's, thinking all the time can i film something just in my living room for yeah. it that that's the biggest issue with with uh vintage camcorders because that is um hardest thing to replace is yeah. batteries so um that's why i felt really lucky when i found that one camera uh that's in the package because so far the battery 
is so good. Like I can shoot all day with it. Um, and, uh, I mean, I could probably shoot for at least four or five hours without a charge, um, with, with that. Whereas everything else that I use, like, yeah, I, I've got a few batteries that last for 20 minutes, you know, and, uh, I got a, the, that first camera I bought, it was the same thing. You could not unplug it even for a second. It's horrible. Well, from the time period where if you decided to charge it at the wrong time, you screwed over your battery almost immediately. Mm. So it was it was so easy to be using that battery for if you were good at timing when you charged it, you could get some long life out of them. But if you only screwed it up like twice, your battery was now, you know, had 10 minutes of time on it forever. Yeah. yeah. A wonderful moment of technology when batteries got a little smarter. I don't care about the rest of technology. I only care about that. Sure. <laughs> uh, with on, on top of that, thinking of people connecting, though, um, yeah. one of the, the legends that you connected with and you have since done other things with, um, I'm waiting for that to show up on your IMDb, is this stuff with Dave the Rock Nelson. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh. The only thing I can uh, ever hear from anyone who's ever spent any time with him is the word surreal. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's, he's dude, they, David the Rock Nelson is the best, man. He, <laughs> uh, I've been obsessed with him for like, I don't know, like, I don't know, for years now. And, uh, when we were shooting Bloodsick, um, I had another, like, like a B actress who was going to cameo in the movie, um, friend of mine or, or more a friend of my mom's actually like a fr my mom went to went to high school uh with this lady named marcia carr uh she's known for she was like the killer in this movie called uh killer workout oh yeah and uh, and uh she um so she's like still like a very close friend of my mom and she was originally going to play the part of the reporter um but she lives in arizona now and she was supposed to come to uh, to South Jersey um, right around when we were shooting, but then something happened and timing got messed up. So, like, very last minute, we were like, we need to replace somebody. And uh, me and the, uh, this guy, Ryan, who ran sound on the film, uh, we were, like, just... Uh, we had, were talking about David the Rock Nelson, something we had just watched. And uh, and he was like, wouldn't it be cool if, if The Rock would do the movie? And I was, I was like, he would never. I was like, he's too pure, right? <laughs> and he's, like, you, and he, he's like, you should just message him. He's like, you talk to him a lot, right? Because I had become some of, somewhat of a pen pal of him. Because uh, you have to order his movies like through like letters in the mail. You yeah. Know? <laughs> so over the years of like ordering from him, like, I don't know, like, the guy shoots the shit with me. So I, so I was like, you know what? what? I'll ask. I'll ask. I was like, he's going to say no, but I'll ask. <laughs> so I sent him, I sent him the script and uh, he, I couldn't believe it, but he was into it. You know, he, he had to change some of the dialogue. He wouldn't say, uh, he refused to say dog poop, you know, <laughs> I, think, I mean, it might've said dog shit, but he, uh, he, he, oh man, I wish I could play this. Yeah. I have this like a uh, message he left on the, my machine. He was like, I just read the script. It's really great. But, uh, there's this whole thing about dog shit. And one time my neighbor's dog pooped in my yard and I stepped in it and it is <laughs> scarred me. And I, I won't talk about dog shit in a movie. I can't. I won't. <laughs> it's like me. <laughs> I love that it's a, a personal reason. It's not. He just you know doesn't have a problem with the word. It's actually legitimately an issue yeah. with him. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and he is like a like a very um uh like a, like a moral Christian. You know, like uh, very, yeah. different, very well, different than us. He had no problem talking about the Satanism and like the ripped out organs. But he he wouldn't say dog poop. <laughs> he uh, he has he has a preacher vibe to him too. So like yeah, you know, he's ready to if you give him a podium, he's going to just tell you how it is. <laughs> he uh he went to um a seminary school at one point. He's he was he's a seminary school dropout. <laughs> um, so it's in his blood though, you know. I guess I could see being a dropout. I wonder what it takes to fail seminary school. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a book know. on its own for the, the yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you have now since then done a project with him uh, outside of his cameo, um, so, which yeah. I love that I talked to Scott from strange tapes and yeah. he, this is how he worded it when he said, Oh, 
Bruce said he was going down there, and he, I, so he said, "Do you want to ha- come along? Is there a chance for everybody to meet?" And he, Scott didn't know you were going to put him in the film. I, and, gave, I gave him, I gave him like a couple lines to say on the spot too. Yeah, so in a Santa um, costume. <laughs> and yeah, so uh, last year, um, I think it was like around September or something, uh, the Psychotronic Film Society of Philadelphia um, is. Uh, really cool like bi-monthly program that Philomoka runs uh where uh we all kind of take turns programming uh movies and uh like usually pretty obscure stuff so i i asked david if i could show pumpkin man uh which is my favorite david the rock nelson uh movie um and um and so he was he was all about it so we showed it and like we got like a really really great reaction from the crowd most of the most of the people there had never heard of Nelson before, except for a handful of people that have seen uh, my movie. And outside of that, that, that's all they had seen. So people pretty much loved Pumpkin Man, and he said he got a lot of um, good feedback from it. And then, like, a few weeks later, he was like, how would you guys like to make a Pumpkin Man sequel? <laughs> <laughs> Which, to me, I was like, that's, like, the biggest honor, man. I was like, absolutely. I would love to do uh pumpkin man movie uh so michael michael and i michael's uh michael DeFrancesco's uh my pr- partner in pretty much all, all my films he's a co-producer assistant director director of photography and score composer so michael and i are the two that always go out and shoot with him so um so we decided to do it as a short like all of his pumpkin man he does like five pumpkin man shorts put them together as like an anthology so yeah. we decided we'll we'll do like a short i think it's going to be just under 20 minutes long uh, and I, I co-wrote it with Ryan, uh, who did sound on Bloodsick, and um, we shot most of it here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where I'm living at now. I've recently moved out to Lancaster, and we went out and shot with David for just a couple of scenes as well. So um, it's still like uh, like our film, but he, but it's like very much based on his saga, and he shows up for for a couple scenes for it um is the future then, of it then, in your hands or his hands like when when we then when ev- other people get to see it is that going to be uh your, your yeah hands? so you'll you'll probably get it from me um i think i'm gonna give him uh clearance to sell it if he wants to yeah you know yeah. but um i mean it, it it is it is our our film you know we we shot it directed i'm edit, i'm almost done editing it now i'm basically just need to do like some music and credits but it's almost done um but we'll probably be selling it and then i, I think i yeah i think i told him i was like if, if you want to sell copies of it you can as well um which i i'm like i'm all about you know uh because it's you know pumpkin man is his creation and uh and we did it for fun really yeah um did you <clears throat> by the looks of the photos i saw do you, do you just legitimately dig out a pumpkin and put it on someone's head Oh yeah, that's yeah. my head. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. So, so. Uh, well, you know, if you uh, in his movie, we took it a step further than him, right? We wanted it to be in the vein of Nelson, but still our own. Uh, he carved a jack o' lantern, stuck it on top of a trash can with a white sheet over it. <laughs> that's his pumpkin man. I was like, we can do a little bit better. Let's let's put it on a human. <laughs> For the whole time, we well, like, let's finish this off so we don't have to use the same pumpkin on my face again. <laughs> uh, you know, we had to use three different pumpkins. Yeah, yeah so I would three, imagine they don't last long after that. Is, I think we did three days of shooting on pumpkin man. Each each day is a different pumpkin because those things don't last long, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> we actually so when we shot it in Chicago. I, you know, I brought a pumpkin with me and I carved it in the hotel the night before. <laughs> I snuck the, I snuck that giant pumpkin, uh, past the uh, the front desk. <laughs> the amount of rock stars who're bringing in the booze and the coke to the hotel room, yeah. but no, you're bringing a pumpkin to carve. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then, I've you've been shooting something new since then too, though. What what's next? Yeah. So now uh, our our next feature film is called. Uh, a corpse for christmas and uh i think you guys will be the first person to to hear that title i don't think we've released the title yet but uh that is uh it's a necrophilia serial killer christmas story uh it it stars casper melted hair uh she's best known for uh her donald farmer movies like cannibal hookers and uh hooker with a hooker with a hacksaw right uh it stars um uh 
uh, Nikki uh, DiGadeo, uh, a friend of mine, singer from the band Savage Mystic. Um, this will be his first time acting, but he's he's a natural. He's really great. Uh, it also stars Josh Christensen uh, in a supporting role. He was the lead in Blood Six, Psychosis. Uh, and then we also have uh, Asari Angel, uh, who they are a triple X model. Uh, they did a, a movie called Vanya from Sam Hell. Uh, if, if you're familiar with him, he does yep. things really, yeah, they're really, really intricately, weirdly edited. Um, sometimes hardcore films, sometimes I think they're softcore, but like lots of like blood, guts, and nudity. Yeah, it, but um, under the, the gaze of art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baroque <laughs> art house. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> they're, cool, they're cool. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, Angel is, um, is local to us in Philly. Uh, and uh, they were a really big fan of Blood Sick. Um, so they joined on. We also have Francis Kano is in a smaller role, uh, who's in Blood Sick. Uh, he's a guitar player from Devil Master. Uh, and then we've got um, Joel Weinkoop uh, from all the Tim Ritter films uh, is in it. Uh, Melissa LaMartina from the WNUF Halloween special films is in it. Uh, oh, David the Rock Nelson, of course, uh, <laughs> has got a part in it, and and Scott. So the scene that we filmed with Scott is actually for the for the Christmas one, not a pumpkin man. Oh, okay. Although, because... although, although the two are linked, we filmed we filmed Nelson stuff the same day back to back. Right. Okay. So they it's a you know, extended universe. That's all. Oh. Yeah. Wow. The, uh, uh, the movie it's, ended. It's... <laughs> the movies are, oh yeah. yeah we didn't we didn't notice that i just noticed that a gorilla was there and it was chasing people off the road because it was stealing someone's car we missed out but next week is flames yeah. of fear evidently folks so tune in for that <laughs> but <laughs> well, i i'll be honest i stopped paying attention oh yeah yeah, yeah. No, sure me too. no i was now i'm just thinking of people with pumpkins on their heads but now i'm just yeah. wanting to know what uh scott ends up being even more so but i'll save it for the surprise um Last thing I'm going to ask you about uh, everything, since um, a month in a week from now, we'll be playing it at yeah. uh, the Terrible Fest here in Toronto as the closing the opening day. So you're technically the right first to play uh, right after a movie yeah. called Killer Balloon from some guys in Calgary who make movies uh, twice a year to hold events for a humane society near them. That's so oh, that's they awesome. They make Killer horror. Balloon, it's called? Yeah, it's called Killer Balloon. We oh, played yeah. a movie of theirs two years ago called Gorefers, where, <laughs> where evil gopher puppets were killing people. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and every time they make these movies, they just do it for charity for their because some of their friends work at that humane society and they make the movies for fun and play it at the local like indie theater near them. Um, so yeah, you'll, cool. we'll, we'll get you in touch with those guys. You'll get a kick out of it. But then you close the night. Oh, yeah. um, uh, one thing that I was going to mention, which <clears throat> when I started out doing Terrible Fest, you know, we're doing indie horror is what comes to people's mind. Guys like Sam Hell's stuff comes into me. Um, mm -hmm. That's how I first heard of them. I never used them because a little bit of hardcore for sure. the audience sure. that I play. Yeah. I try to ease something into that because I you know, watch that stuff, but I'm also I'm like more of a Chris Siever guy to that level. Chris yeah, Siever yeah, was totally. Sex Squatch was the very first film we ever played at uh, at a Terrible Fest event. Oh, cool! Yeah, so it all it all connects. But um, some people, in, again, in reviews, will say that I, I don't know what they expect. I think when they see the idea of a purposely done shot on video film, they maybe they assume a kind of Chris Seaver kind of thing. And yes. your film is not. It is funny. There are some funny <laughs> parts in it. But then people go, oh, it gets a little cruel as the movie goes on. I can't yeah. take some of that seriously. I mean, you know, I'm, it's like warning people, there is a cat death. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, no, a lot of people, a lot of people say that. it's very, it's, it's a mean spirited movie. Uh, and it, um, you know, it is, it is a, a horror film. You know, it's, uh, it's a serial killer movie. Um, it's based on true crime. Uh, uh, we, I took the story, um, from uh, Richard Chase, a uh, who a man who thought he was a true vampire in the seventies, uh, fictionalized it, you know, set in Philly and all that. But uh, you know, I, I, there's no jokes in the movie. I think the, I think it is funny for sure. I think it, it gets a lot of laughs, but it's I mean, it's not meant to be a comedy. You no, know? I think um, it's funny because it's sort of especially if you're 
I don't know if the word is genre or type of people. Like one of yeah. the first films I ever tried to make, we were having a bunch of bands over at a like a house party, and the bands were playing. They were just I realized I had the weirdest friends around me, so I just started yeah. filming them and then started getting them to say things so I could later yeah. edit it into a film. And yeah. a lot of guys kind of start off with that way, where they realize their own world is sort of like this. So you take yeah. your your friends and real people and then you move them up a notch and you move yeah. it up to a certain level so these non-actors can become fairly relatable actors one of the big things is your lead is who's the problematic person of the movie is yeah. a likable guy he's a likable person <laughs> yeah. but he shouldn't because so i feel like I think why some people are like, oh, it's really cruel is because I feel like they're disappointed in him without giving any spoilers yeah. away. They're sure, like, ah, sure. oh, he shouldn't do that. <laughs> you know, Which, and then you, you catch yourself saying that. And that's yeah. when you sort of laugh going, wait a minute, why am I saying that? Yeah. I, uh, well, you know, my thinking is if, you know, if I were to have a story about nice people, it wouldn't be a very entertaining film, you know? So I think, uh, I think <laughs> fucked up people make for a better story. Yeah. For sure, and the, I challenge you this at some point in the in in your film career, make a movie about where everyone is insanely nice, like to an uncomfortable level. And that's yeah. there's your challenge, which in turn becomes, I think, even more of a horror film than others might be. You know what? I'll, I'll say this: uh, Pumpkin Man Lives, our Nelson film, uh, because it was so close to David the Rock Nelson, we wanted to make it like pretty PG. And uh, I think most people are pretty, I think most of the characters are pretty nice. Uh, there's some mistakes made and there's a pumpkin man monster, but for the most part, everyone's pretty good spirited in that movie. It's like very, it's very different than the stuff I usually write. <laughs> well, Bruce, um, I'm not going to take up much more of your time. I'm just going to end with uh, this. Of course, people in Toronto, you get to come and see the movie for only a whopping $2 because that's how we do it for the people. Um, yeah. Seeing in the background the uh, DVD copy, um, the movie is available on Tubi. It, it, do you this know... is actually a VHS. That's a VHS? Oh, okay. Right. Uh, but uh, it just got a DVD release from Toxic Filth Video. I haven't seen the DVD yet. But I, I think uh, it might be shipping now or is about to say. He just started taking orders like two weeks ago. That's what I was going to read too, because yeah, those guys also uh, inspire me because they've introduced me to titles that I would never have seen if I didn't have sure. them on the social yeah. medias. Um, but yeah, they're they're cool. They put on all kinds of stuff, and uh, some of the movies I've gotten from him, I absolutely really loved. Uh, I think I saw you post about it recently. The the uh, the uh, Swabian Swabby and... Sawmill, yeah, yeah, massacre. I originally got from him amazing amazing somebody else put it out now i think you were supposed to but, but uh yeah dead vision others... has that new release of it okay uh th th there's other stuff he puts out that i'm like i don't know what the fuck this is like trash i mean there's an yeah. audience for it i guess and then um well they do yeah. all those like big really like gross out compilations as well all right yeah. yeah some of it looks kind of sketch i don't know <laughs> but um <laughs> everybody needs a home man everybody needs sure. a place to go to yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah they um well yeah they're the most they're one of the most renegade labels i think you're gonna find but yeah. they they carve a market and they bring us weirdos together so yeah, yeah. bless them for existing totally. <laughs> uh yeah you can also get blood sick on blu-ray um uh i think the uh, diabolic dvd has a couple of copies left uh and then i'm i'm out personally but i'm trying to do a, a repress uh probably this summer well i'll bug everyone to uh to message you for that and they will uh they'll find out or again as I said toxic uh, is gonna have it um at any moment now if not already and uh and again it is on tubi if you are you know you just need to find out which... watch it for free yeah, yeah. why not yeah. I, I love that i think i told you it was on there you didn't even know it was <laughs> no i so i i had um yeah, I went through a service that gets onto stream uh, platforms, and and they're not great with communication. So like, uh, <laughs> I I knew it should have been there eventually, but uh, I had no idea that it was up at the time. You were you were the first person to see it, I think, on there. Yeah. Well, maybe in a year when you get your five cents of royalties, they'll send send it to you. We'll see. Um, I, got, I think I got. I'm averaging like twenty bucks a month though from them. It's not so bad. Really? Oh well, yeah. damn. Then. We're doing it's the right thing I by thought. pimping it out. Yeah, I know of a few guys who've like I haven't seen Squat, but uh, that means you're uh, you're getting the views. It's working out. It's it's not 
not great. You know, I'm not going to get rich <laughs> off of it, but no. it's, I'll, you know, it's something that I'll take. <laughs> Well, well, I hey, mean, thanks for having me, man. And uh, I'm I'm going to try to make it up to your festival, too. I'm, uh, uh, me and uh, the uh, the star Josh are uh, are trying to see if we can make it happen. Actually, you know, we, uh, we, we neither of us have been to Toronto and uh, and I owe Chris Eber a, a visit uh, on the way in Rochester. So we're, we're going to try to make it happen <laughs> if we can you know? kidnap him and bring you with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fingers and toes crossed. You never know with this wonderful frozen world up here in Canada. Yeah, it's actually sunny and beaming today. Yesterday, it's blurred snow, so I couldn't find my way home. So yeah. you never know. But be safe out there when you cross this scary border. But otherwise, hopefully, fingers, you can't see them. Toes are crossed, too. Um, yeah. Maybe we'll get to meet you. Otherwise, either way, you guys in Toronto or the surrounding area, Come to Eyesore Cinema on the 24th. That's the first day of Terrible Fest. And uh, if you come in saying specifically you're just there for uh, blood sick psychosis, I'll give you some free candy. <laughs> and, oh, but I'll tell you, only take one or two of them. Don't take like five. That would be a bad idea. <laughs> right on, Adam. All right. Thanks for hanging out with us, Bruce. We will talk hey. again soon. See you. <laughs>